Merry Christmas. Hi, it's Father Randy coming at you live from our Lady Perpetual Helps Church in Sublette. I'm standing in front of our a major scene to give you our latest uh, CCD e-learning for the school year 2020-2021. If you came to one of our Masses on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, uh, we had the blessing of this sacramental. That's all uh, major scenes are is sacramentals. Remember, sacramentals are things that they don't give grace in themselves, but they do prepare our hearts to receive the grace of the sacrament. And so they're, they're called the little brothers of the sacraments, the sacramentals are. Uh, they just get us ready to receive all of that love that Jesus wants to give us when he gives us the Eucharist or one of the other seven sacraments. And uh, what we did in that uh, major blessing on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day was uh, before we uh, put the baby Jesus in the crib, we just sprinkled the uh, manger with holy water. We said a prayer blessing. And the prayer blessing was just that uh, anybody that would look upon the figurines in this manger, whether it's the wise men and their camel, uh, the shepherds and their sheep, or of course the Holy Family itself, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, that when they would look upon this uh, manger scene, they'd be reminded of the great humility that God had in becoming man, becoming uh, one of us, taking on our human flesh, and also of the great love that God had for us then. He would allow uh, that baby boy to grow up, uh, his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and die on the cross for the salvation of our souls. And so it was really a beautiful blessing. We sprinkled it with holy water, and then we enthroned the baby Jesus. We put the uh, uh, statuette of the baby uh, in the manger. And, uh, you know, I think it's something that we take advantage uh, for granted, that uh, we always have had manger scenes, and we often have major scenes in our own homes, but it wasn't really until the, uh, the 13th century that uh, major scenes became a sacramental. And so it was a man named uh, Francis of Assisi, who was actually, in the year 1223, he was in the, uh, the town of Greccio, which is a town in Italy not too far from uh, Assisi itself, and he's walking down the city streets in the town of Greccio, and uh, he was noticing that all of the shopkeepers had their windows decked out uh, with uh, wrapped presents and glitter and gold and uh, they were celebrating uh, Christmas but uh, there was no mention of Jesus himself that the baby uh, was being born in the manger in Bethlehem there was no reference at all uh, to the, cr the real meaning of Christmas and so uh, St. Francis got permission from the Holy Father at the time Pope uh, Nor Honorius III to erect a manger scene in that town of Greccio. And so what he did was St. Francis uh, had his uh, monks, the Franciscan monks, help him. And uh, he called uh, his old uh, uh, boyhood friend, uh, John Valido was his name, or John Valida. And John Valida was a farmer. And uh, he had this farmer friend of his bring uh, his farm uh, yard animals, a uh, cow, a donkey, sheep, uh, to bring those uh, into the town of Greccio. And he made the first manger scene. It was a live manger scene where the monks uh, from his order actually played the parts of the, the three kings and the shepherds and St. Joseph and the Holy Family. And so uh, St. Francis is really taking a page out of They had already had uh, Easter plays telling about the story of Jesus carrying the cross to Calvary and dying on it and rising from the dead. They had Easter stories like that, where they would have uh, pageants and plays uh, to uh, have the Easter message. Uh, we have in our own time that Omergauen uh, passion play in Germany, and there's also a passion play in South Dakota, in, uh, I think it's in Sioux Falls, there's one in, in Rapid City as well, near uh, Mount Rushmore. But uh, these uh, Easter plays were very common at the time, and so what St. Francis was really doing was having a, a Christmas play. Remember, this is the time before uh, videos and movies and YouTube videos. Uh, they didn't have uh, the electronic media that we have today. And so they would actually put on plays uh, to uh, tell the stories of not only uh, secular stories, but also of the faith. And so I just wanted to share with you uh, how manger scenes came about as a sacramental in the church. It was all by St. Francis of Assisi back in the year 1223, and so we've had these for you know, 800 years now. We've had uh, 
our own major scenes now, even in our own house. And something else I want to tell you about sacramentals is we had that special blessing uh, of the manger scene when uh, we had our Christmas Eve and our Christmas Day Masses. But uh, uh, there's also a way to get your own manger scenes blessed in your own homes. And there's always the tradition that uh, you, what you would do is you would take the, uh, the baby Jesus. And so I have the, the baby Jesus from my own manger scene at uh, the rectory. You see, he's quite smaller. The uh, one that we have, oops, the one that we have in the church, uh, this is uh, uh, baby Jesus, actually 13 and a half inches uh, long. As you can see how small uh, my manger is at home in comparison. But uh, there's always the tradition that to get your manger scene blessed, all you would do is you would take the uh, infant Jesus from your manger and touch him to the uh, blessed uh, baby Jesus from the manger scene at your church. And so, you know, it's not that your priest is lazy, but especially during this pandemic, uh, I can't come to your house to bless uh, your manger. Uh, and so one way that you can do it is just to bring the infant Jesus from your own home manger set and touch him. And so the sacramental blessing is transferred just by touch. And so that's even in the sacred scriptures. Uh, the uh, sacramentals in sacred scripture uh, when uh, they were touched to other people, uh, the people were cured of their disease. So uh, people used to uh, touch cloths to uh, the grave of St. Peter and then bring those uh, cloths home uh, to those people that were sick in their family and let the cloth, a uh, third-class relic, uh, touch uh, the sick persons and the sick persons were healed. So that's even in sacred scripture. and We see even in the Old Testament with the prophet Elisha as well. But just to know that uh, uh, you can get your own manger set blessed in this way. And it's the same way that it happens with sacramentals of uh, brown scapular. So I wear a brown scapular, many of you also do. And once in a while, that brown scapular, after years of use, it will wear out. And so uh, what do you do is you get a new sacramental, a new brown scapular. And you don't have to have the priest bless the new one. You could just have uh, touch your old sac brown scapular to the uh, to the new one and transfer that blessing and then start to wear the new brown scapular and then you would just uh, bury or uh, burn the old uh, scapular. So just hoping that uh, some information on sacramentals of how you can transfer the blessings from one to another. You can do the same thing with rosaries just as we did with our manger set then. Wish you a Merry Christmas and I hope that uh, you've looked upon the manger scene in your own home as well as in our church and being reminded of the humility of God's only Son becoming man uh, to save us from our sins, that great magnanimous love of God that he would give us a Savior, Jesus Christ. Merry Christmas.